Hey guys, before anything else, I just want to say that I'm going to do a giveaway of a shop purchasable A tier skin for one lucky subscriber. This is my way of giving back to you guys for helping me reach 1000 subs. To join the giveaway, be sure that you're subscribed and comment below your favorite skin concept in this video. I'll announce the winner in the next week's video. Since I'm a pretty small channel, there's a high chance of you actually winning the giveaway, so be sure to test out your luck. You have nothing to lose. Once again, thanks a heap, you guys. Uy, kumusta? Ako si Percy, and I made five different costumes for five different survivors plus a hunter in Identity 5. The Promise Neverland crossover is just on the horizon, and since I can't buy my own skins because I'm broke, I thought to myself, why not just make some of my own and share it to you guys? That's basically what I did, and I hope you guys will like these new designs. As always, I don't consider myself an artist. I just started drawing when I made the first accessories video back when, so please, don't be too harsh. Before making actual skins, first we need to brainstorm what overarching theme do we want to base these skins around. I thought of a couple, I was thinking of a futuristic sci-fi theme, a space-related theme, mythological gods and goddesses, you name it. However, the theme I felt most comfortable making was a fantasy-esque medieval RPG aesthetic similar to those of Genshin Impact, Ragnarok, and Grand Chase. I love these games, and I want to incorporate some of the visuals from these games to Identity 5. We follow a group of four unlikely heroes venturing across distant lands to find and slay a legendary dragonborn wreaking havoc in multiple towns and cities. Now, I didn't choose four random survivors just because I wanted to make a skin for them. I chose a group of survivors that you could actually see and use in ranked games. One of each roll, no repeats. With that said, let's start with our first survivor, Muro Mountain Roar, the Paladin. Here's a time lapse of the drawing process. The Paladin is a very iconic role in fantasy RPGs, and I think Muro is an excellent survivor that fits that theme. He already has a mount, his trusty boar, so if we replace it with something more elegant, like say a miniature horse, trim his beard, give him a man bun, put some shiny metal armor, make him look like a daddy, and that's basically it. That's a good-looking paladin right there. Paladins are typically beefy tanks, and since Muro in the game can take a lot of hits from the hunter, I think it fits him thematically and gameplay-wise. But what do you guys think? Is this skin any good? Tell me in the comments below. Our second character is Naive Night Stalker, the Rogue Assassin. Here's a time lapse of the drawing process. I mean, this is pretty self explanatory. Naive is just begging to have an assassin ninja costume. I mean, look at him. The base skin already looks like an assassin with the hoodie on. Emphasize on that more, and you have a ninja ready to zoom past the hunter. The green bandages on his arm is the stand in for his elbow pads. By the way, since I don't know how to draw dynamic poses yet, I'm tracing basic structures from references I got in Pinterest. Our third character is Luca Lightbearer, the Sorcerer. Here's a time lapse of how I did it. Base skin Luca already has the ability to control and manipulate lightning. But let's be real, that doesn't make any sense. That's why it would make more sense if we made him a costume showing his magical prowess of that element. Mages and sorcerers are usually smart, cunning individuals. 
And since Luca is a decoder, he's probably a big smarty himself. Plus, he already has an affiliation and sort of control over Lightning. If he lived in a fantasy RPG world, he just might be the best lightning sorcerer anyone has ever seen. The final survivor is reserved for Demi Divine, the alchemist. Here's a time lapse for her skin. Demi is a barmaid, and what role would be more fitting to give her than an alchemist? Think about it. Instead of mixing alcohol on the go, she would rather mix and match chemicals and substances to produce all sorts of potions she or her teammates can drink in a game. Health potions, speed potions, love potions, doesn't matter. So long as she has her trusty shoulder bag, she could make any potion on a whim. Plus, not to throw any shade, but I'd rather drink potions than gasoline. In a fantasy world, there's always got to be a big baddie our heroes have to defeat. And to complete this entire set, I made a feral dragonborn skin for none other than Lucino the Legendary. Here's a time lapse. Usually, in other world medieval movies or RPGs, the big baddie is always going to be a dragon or the undead. And since there's already an Undead King skin for Leo, let's give more loving to our favorite underrated reptile. I gave him wing-like appendages on his arm to mimic a weavern aesthetic to make him look more of a dragon than a dinosaur. Plus, those tiny wings give him more aerodynamics when he jumps high up in the air to land exactly where he wants to. Now you might be wondering why the color choice is very similar to the base skin. And to that I say... That's it! Those are 5 fantasy RPG skins for 5 different characters in Identity 5. Don't forget to subscribe and comment to get the chance of winning a free A-tier skin. Ingat!